Happy holidays, nerds and goals. We haven't done these in a while because we've been so busy at home. But once again, the pharmacy seems to not understand how my prescriptions work, so I gotta go over there. So I might as well talk with you guys while we do. How y'all doing this lovely Wednesday afternoon? It's hard to believe it's December, considering how gorgeous it is. We're talking about magic shops because I brought up my chaotically loose thought patterns about magic shops earlier today, and I thought we'd continue that topic. So what is, where do you stand on Fantasy City? But I suppose I mean, you could also para, paraphrase these into other places. I mean, advanced enough technology looks like magic, but you know. So let's, let's say store that sells superpowers. In fantasy, which is 80% of us, that would be the quote unquote magic shop. Now the idea of a magic shop kind of doesn't make sense unless it's something that can be mass produced. A gun shop would be the real world equivalent, I guess, or a thrift store. But guns are mass produced and thrift stores are kind of a hodgepodge. The whole thing about magic shops and magic items is that the, the ingrained thought pattern is they're, they're not mass produced, right? Uh, if they were mass produced, the fantasy world would be a lot easier to survive. If, if magic items worked on the same principle as, say, guns, where you just have magic items being mass-produced for both civilian and military applications, it sort of ruins the point, doesn't it? So for whatever reason, we have all sort of agreed that in the terms of fantasy land, magic is hard to get your hands on. But we've also kind of had this idea that there's a shop in town that sells these items, which is sort of silly. Why would you sell them if you had acquired enough of them? So there's kind of two ways I like to think about magic shops, if I'm going to allow one. So let me know what you're thinking and how you do this idea. Okay, so the first idea would be, of course, the shop that set out to do something that inevitably became associated with adventurers. Perfect example, the alchemist, right? So the alchemist starts herbalist, apocryphy, whatever you want to call it. This guy, girl, whatever, starts out making stuff that will is easy to make overnight and will sell to the villagers, you know. Simple healing potions, disease tonics, uh, painkillers for the sore tooth, uh, stuff to soothe your stomach, love potions, stuff like that, you know. Simple village barber, village apocryphy kind of stuff. Perfumes, maybe some inks, everyday normal stuff. Easy peasy healing potions, even some snake oil, you know, stuff that miracle cures, but it is just, you know, ink and water. But then some adventurers come in town and the adventurers decide first, you know, what's the first thing adventurers look for? Healing potions. And then later on, cure disease, cure poison. Well, Alchemist has already got some simple healing potions and some simple poison and disease tonics. But as the requirements of the adventurers become a little bit more specific and sometimes esoteric, like invisibility, well, maybe the alchemist has those recipes somewhere in their book, or maybe they know where to get them. And then the alchemist becomes sort of a mini quest giver going, well, I could make this, I think, but I don't have the re recipe. Could you bring me the recipe? Which, of course, then the player characters, if they were smart, would go, well, if, you, if I have the recipe, why do I need to pay you to do it? But, you know, they never think that far. Or, well, I think I've got a recipe, but, you know, I've never made this because I don't have the stuff. If you could go out and get me the stuff, I could try and make it. All right, so then Alchemist starts realizing that these adventurers will give him money in exchange for making these potions. And as the potions become more and more ridiculous, or the need for them becomes more and more frequent, we need five healing potions. The Alchemist is gonna start diverting more and more energy into acquiring the material components and finding ways to make these, these things relatively quickly to 
finish the supply and demand of the adventurers who are also more willing to give the alchemists outrageous sums of money. Oh, howdy. Happy holidays. Happy holidays, dogs. Uh, for these things. But, you know, as the alchemist is focusing more and more attention on making these outrageous healing potions, maybe the general population is feeling a little left out because, you know, where's my love potion? Where's my sleep tea? Where's the medicine for my rheumatism? You're spending all the time making potions of fire breathing and invisibility, but what about us? So then another alchemist comes into town and starts becoming competition going, well, that alchemist isn't making your rheumatism formula anymore. Let me make it for you, right? And you could use the same thought pattern for the blacksmith who maybe made one thing that could be qualified as magic in his entire life, his crowning achievement. Then these adventurers start coming on and they start asking for, you know, masterwork and better armor. And he's like, well, I suppose I could, but it's going to take time, money and equipment. And the adventurers, of course, same thing. Oh, we've got money. And so blacksmith, whatever, this won't go for anything, right? The guy starts, the guy, girl person starts making one thing. But as the needs of the adventurers become more and more specific and the adventurers are more willing to give him lots of money to make these things, then the guy might start focusing more and more on the adventures because why make a hundred horseshoes or whatever where I'm going to get the same amount of money for making one thing for one guy. Same amount of time, same amount of energy, but I'm going to make one dagger and this guy's going to pay me the exact same amount of money that I would have got for a hundred um, horseshoes. Of course I'm going to do that. But again, then the rest of the people in town, hey, where's my horseshoes? And then they start going someplace else, right? All right, so that's, that's, that's the most likely scenario. The second scenario, you know, is um, the thrift store, the thrift store magic shop, you know? This guy's running a pawn shop, general store, whatever just bits and bobs of things maybe that credenza that uncle william left him really does take you to another universe i don't know but you know joe the wizard comes into town and says i want to pawn off this staff what do you give me for it and the guy's like what's it do and he's like i don't know it's magic and the guy goes okay i'm sure five gold pieces and then Joe, the wizard, tells somebody else, and then somebody else comes in and says, will you buy this from me, and so on and so forth. So slowly, over time, pawn shop, thrift shop guy is accumulating these things that may or may not be magic, and then adventurers show up, and they come into town. He's like, I detect magic. And, you know, three or four things show up on the shelves, and they try and buy them, and he's like, oh, I think it does this. I don't know. You know, so I'll sell it to you for half off because I don't know what it does. And then that wash, rinse, repeat. Once the reputation starts that this guy is selling magic items and buying magic items, the adventurers come back from the dungeon and they're like, we've got five things we're going to use, but these three things we're never going to use. Can we sell them to you slash trade them to you? And thrift stop guy is like, okay, fine. And then he sort of becomes the specialty shop, like the shrimp the thrift shop that turns into the pop collectible shop slowly over time as the inventory changes towards a more specific audience but as his specific audience becomes the adventurers obviously the previous audience is starting to feel left out and might start taking their money elsewhere now the third possibility is retired adventurer who is sort of the equivalent of thrift star we've got you know retired wizard retired adventurer and retired wizard is either you know spent the last 20 years making scrolls and whatever and for the adventuring but now his adventuring career is over and he wants to invest all his time and energy and studying the stars or dragon lineology or whatever and he's got all these extra things and he's like i'm never going to use them Sure, I could leave some to my apprentice, but eh, I'm just going to sell them. And then you get the same cycle. Adventurers come in and say, do you have this? Retired adventurer goes, yes, I do. What about this? No, I don't. Well, will you trade this for this? Sure, I will. 
do you know how to make this? I do, but you gotta go get me the parts. You know, so two and three kind of are then the same thing. All right, just, I've got an excess of tap. Some of it I know what it does. Some of it I don't know what it does. I'll sell it to you and I'll buy your tat or trade you tat. But hey, why don't you go and get me more tat and we can trade more. So that's, I think, the most logical way to have a magic shop. Which means, which we get back to the old, the original tables, what are the chances that a very specific object that a character in town is looking for would be available from the magic shop? Well, you probably have a better chance of finding a potion, a very specific potion from an alchemist than he would at the thrift shop, right? Probably have a much better chance of finding a specific scroll from the wizard, but let's say they want a very specific pair of gloves. What are the chances that that very specific pair of gloves is available at the thrift shop, magic shop? 1%, 2%, 0%. You know, hey, I've got a pair of gloves, but I don't know what they do. I'll sell them to you for half off. But, you know, you, you, you gave me your money, you took your chances kind of thing. So then you have to develop a table. Assuming they really weren't something very specific. More often than not, they just sort of walk in and go detect magic and then buy whatever and then hope for the best, right? Whenever they're going to look for a specific thing, it often becomes almost like a mini quest. In closing, if you're gonna have a magic shop, probably the first most likely would be the specialty who just re-specializes. And the second most likely would be the thrift store. But you don't wanna make them so common that the party goes, well, why adventure? All I gotta do is just buy everything I need from here or just the whole campaign becomes shopping. Because I assure you, I have seen a whole campaign break down to just let's go back to town and buy more magic items because we don't have enough. Anyways, that's my thoughts on the magic shop. What are your thoughts on the magic shop? Do you allow those magic shops in your fantasy slash science fiction slash old west slash superhero game? Uh, how do you monetize the buying and selling of magic items and how do they work? Let me know, fellow game designers and DMs. Let me know what you think about magic shops. Because, you know, it's Christmas and you should go to a magic shop and buy each other something nice. See ya.